What happens when you honor your man of God? What happens? The soul goes through a healing. When you meet your man of God in this life and you start to take care of them, when you start to prosper them, your path, your mind, your health, your finances start to prosper. Every area of your life where there could be success found begins to be saturated with reigning, exaltation and promotion. Whenever you bless your man of God, those blessings are not forgotten in the spirit world. There's an account of the blessings that you pour out on your man of God. Your man of God is God operating as a man. God living out his life in a man's body. That's why we call it man of God is God as man is God operating in manly form. And so what makes a man of God is that the elements of his thoughts, the elements of his words, the elements of his decisions, his strategies, his counsel is being inspired by the Holy Ghost. That's what makes a man a man of God, that the inspiration of the Spirit, the influence of the Holy Ghost, is catapulting all of his choices and behaviors and mindsets and focus. Whenever you bless your man of God, there is a degree of freedom that you intercept you intercept this freedom because you take it by force. When I say intercept, intercept is a strong word because it means that something is just out in the atmosphere, but you take it by force. So I use the word interception because it is a revelatory reaction that only people that activate this can possess it. So you have to take it by force. You have to be forceful to receive the ability that God gives you to help your man of God. Whenever you help your man of God, you don't ever have to see him respond to how you're helping him in order to keep helping him. Because the bigger picture is that even if the man of God doesn't respond, the deed is being recorded. The woman that was a Shunammite, even though she's feeding Elisha, she's taking care of Elisha, she desires to bless Elisha, all of these deeds are being recorded. If Elisha never says thank you, if Elisha never turns and said, I really appreciate that, the deeds are being recorded. The life of the Shunammite woman, it was taken into a judgment. When you are blessing your man of God, the Lord judges you. When he judges you, he now seeks to reward all those blessings. All those blessings come into the court system of heaven. Did you know that God has court sessions over people who bless their leader, who take care of their leader? who love their leader, who respect their leader, who honor their leader, and who have a proper and pure perspective towards their leader to keep them unharmed, to keep them untouched by evil. When you bless your man of God, there is a love anointing that you increase in. There is an increase in love that you don't have at the beginning of blessing your man of God. But the depths of love is unfolded to you, is unveiled to you so that you can live in it and walk in it. When you walk in it, now saints, I want you to hear this. Dr. Mike Murdoch is the man of God that when I, I was transitioning out of my hardships, my tough times, I received favor and opportunity with him and he loved me and liked me and enjoyed me and enjoyed my respect and enjoyed my sacrifices, and enjoyed my servanthood and enjoyed my response 
to his ways and his words. My whole goal became that I'm going to bless Dr. Mike Murdoch and I'm going to show love to him and I'm not going to wait for him to show love to me. I'm not going to wait for him to give me money. I'm going to give him money. I'm not going to wait for him to express respect towards me. I'm going to be the first one in my mind, in my mind. I want you to catch this. Because saints, when you are with your man of God, it has to be your goal so that when Satan attacks you, you don't manifest as something that was adversarial to the vision of God, the man of God, the work of God. Because saints, if the heart is not right, God God knows what to do to show you that your heart is not right. So you have to have the goal. You ever wonder why do people end up arguing with the man of God or hating the man of God or saying the man of God false or saying the man of God? And it's because those people do not position their heart to truly love and honor and respect and help and assist because when love enters into your heart for someone that is divinely connected to you, that love will never be erased by God. It only could be tampered with by evil. Remember what I'm telling you this. When we see the life of Esther, Esther's deliverance didn't come because she became queen. Esther's deliverance didn't come because she became virtuous. Her deliverance came because there was a man that she began to please. And that, that man was her full desire and goal to impress him, to make him feel like he was king, he was honored, he was celebrated. All of her value was hidden. I was reading in Genesis, and it says that when God was making a woman, he took the rib out of the man while he was in a deep sleep. He put him in a deep sleep. And then he made the woman out of the rib. And it says that God took woman out of man. And so what made Esther so powerful was not not her title, not her crown. What made her powerful was that she excelled in a mission to please King Ahasuerus. This is one of the secret realms of how to live an easy and blessed life, is that you start to build an account of honor towards a man that's of God that is sent to you to open your eyes from one glory to the next, one truth to the next. And when you treat that man of God like a king, there's a kingdom that you yourself discover, carrying all the things that you desire, everything that you want fixed, everything that you want blessed, everything you want protected, everything you want delivered, everything that you want helped out, everywhere where there's assistance. The power of God comes through blessing your man of God. The power of God comes through blessing your man of God. When you bless them and don't curse them, that means that you have delivered your own soul from vain imaginations. You have delivered your own soul. You have decided to use the word of God, the perspective of God, the mind of Christ, to deliver your soul from the things that cause you to operate contrary, to operate in vanity, to operate in pride. You can't serve your man of God if you have pride in you. Pride is a very evil dimension of Satan that sneakily lives 
within everybody's heart until you on purpose, intentionally ejects it. You have to eject pride because pride will give you another system of thinking towards your man of God. But purity, it opens up your mind into pleasure thoughts. When your heart is pure, you think about the pleasure of your man of God. You think about their joy. You think about their comfort. You think about their happiness. I remember there have been times where Dr. Mike Murdoch would ask for a certain seed from his partners. And I would pay the full totality of what, if all of them would have sold, I would pay that full amount so that he wouldn't even have to look for them to sow that I could create a pleasurable experience in that moment. Just think, think about what happens when your heart is pure. Jealousy is no longer there. Competition is no longer there. You kill conversations in your brain when you are pure. Purity has no illegal conversations within itself. If you take a note, write that down. Purity has no illegal conversations within itself. You're not conversing in your mind on how to destroy, how to attack, how to create a narrative that goes against that man of God, how to bring problems, how to bring trouble. You are completely thinking about that man of God's heaven on earth. When you become your man of God's heaven on earth, you tap into heaven on earth.